divided by 120. Smells like algebra. Somebody work it. Don't forget cross multiplication. What? Oh, this is easy. Is that 40? Me? Did I say, no, 40. No, 4. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, correction in the equation. Correction in the equation. It's 4 poles. Remember, remember my model I drew? 4 poles. All right, so here's the equation. How'd you do it? That's the equation. Yep. Exactly. Say that again. I did 60 times 120, then divided by 4. Tell everybody on the internet who you are. I'm Shen Chung. And you're a smart guy. Yes. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Just equals that close, Shen. 120 <laughs> times 60 divided by 4, which will give you 1,800 RPM. And Mr. Terry, that this is the formula to do what now? To calculate what? To calculate the rotational speed of a generator. The rotational speed of a generator. Keep from burning people's houses up. How close of a tolerance do you think our power grid stays to 60 hertz? 5%. Less than one percent. Less than one percent. It's actually sixty point zero five hertz, or fifty nine point nine five hertz to sixty point oh five hertz is how it runs. That's how close they tolerate that. We cannot tolerate anything on our grid much higher or much lower than that. We have to do things to correct. Um, there was a blackout in 2003 up in Ohio that spiked our frequency down here to almost 60.1. And they almost, <laughs> we almost lost the whole East Coast. That's how, that's how tolerant, how, how much uh, intolerant our grid is to fluctuations. Voltages will fluctuate up and down, that's fine. But frequency cannot, because what did I tell you all our generators are? They're all tied together. So if one slows down, it tries to drag the rest of them down. And, and if a whole bunch of them drag down, then it's going to take out, try to take out the whole grid. Because the protection relay equipment is going to start shutting things off to protect itself. Okay? It's got to protect itself because y'all saw how big those turbines are. How much do you think they cost? Millions. And if we can just shut it down to protect it, for, keep from having to rebuild it, you losing power for a day or two is really doesn't matter to them, okay? That's just the way power is. All right? You can live without power for a little while. Those generators cost a bunch of money. And in turn, it saves you money as well because what's the only... Duke Power's only source of income. Us. We pay the utility bill, right? So well, the your less they can make it on us, the better. All right, Mr. Terry. Yes. All right, so we brought we, we told these students that there were sixty thousand reasons why we wanted them to know all of this. Sixty thousand. Because they're all sitting here wondering why. Are we learning this? And we told them there were 60,000 reasons. I want you to share with them the 60,000 reasons. Okay. I told you what I did at Richmond Community College, right? I trained students to work on the equipment of our grid. Our grid is aging, along with the people that know how to take care of it. We are training people to take their place, and they're being snapped up. As soon as they graduate, as soon as they graduate, they're getting jobs. Average, average starting pay is $60,000. Base salary. You add in travel, you add in bonuses, and you're looking at somewhere around $100,000 of income in your first year of employment. 
Okay, so I with lied. a two-year associate's degree, with no more requirement to go to college, with no more continuing my education. We have students that graduated with a 4.0. He went to a contractor last May. He was bringing home $10,000 a month. Bringing it home, that's after tax. Okay? He came in, he studied hard, he worked his butt off. He graduated summa cum laude, he ended up with four job offers. He had companies competing for him. 10000 a month, that's $120,000. He's now working in Maui, Hawaii. He works for Maui Electric in the county of Maui in Hawaii. Okay? That's what he wanted to do. He loves to scuba dive. He loves fish. He loves the ocean. Couldn't ask for a better candidate to go to Maui. Uh, we have um, Anchorage, Alaska calling for our people if you like the cold weather. Uh, we placed nine students last May in Florida. Uh, if you like the warm weather, um, we placed them in Texas, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New York. We put them everywhere. We, and we are, as far as we can tell, the only program of our type in the country at Richmond Community College. That's why they're coming to us. We have sponsorships of Duke Energy. We have sponsorships of the people that build the protective relay, Schweitzer Engineering. They give us whatever we want. Whatever we ask for, they, they give us. They help train people. GE just gave us $80,000 worth of relays, protective relays, because, and technical support to come down to help us learn how to use the things. So, when we say $60,000, that's the average. That's a low average, actually. It's gone up in the past year or so uh, to about probably, I'm guessing, 70. Because the people are really, really loving what we do. Now, what we tell the companies is you're not getting a completed product, product out of our, our two-year program. But it cuts down on the training by about two and a half years out of a five-year training program. They're hiring people with four-year engineering degrees, electrical engineering degrees, and our students are going down there and running circles around them, showing them what they need to be doing. And they have higher education. We have students with master's degrees that are coming back to our program to take our program because their master's degrees are not paying off for them like they had hoped. But they're coming back for an associate's degree, a two-year associate's degree. What we're sitting on right now, guys, is the beginnings of something awesome. <laughs> we're fixing to take off. If we can get enough faculty in there to teach, we could take in a hundred new students every year. A hundred. And we wouldn't fill up the job market for 20 years after that. But we only have enough staff for 60. So students are going to have to start competing for places. Just like in nursing, just like at a four-year university, they're going to have to start competing for placement. You right out of high school can go and when you're 20 years old, have a job making more money than I've ever made in my whole life. And why don't I do it? It's because I love to teach. I love to hear my voice. My own voice. <laughs> now, I love watching people grow up and mature. And you would not believe the difference in the students, in first year students and second year students, the maturity level they get. Uh, we also do internships with Duke Energy. Um, the contractors are given out, uh, that do work for Duke Energy, are given out internships. You go work for them for a whole summer. They pay you. They, they house you, they feed you, they clothe you for a whole summer, and when you come out, you come up with a job offer. If they like you, 
come out with a job offer, all you got to do is graduate at that point and show up the next June for your job. You call them up where you need them. Well, we need you in Florida. You go on down to Florida. Start your life. At twenty. So, Any questions? That's your 60,000 reasons. Questions? Can you imagine what you'd be making if you were a good employee in five years? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. Uh, uh, <laughs> Let's not go there. But, <laughs> but I do want to point out something, too, guys. Our program is extremely difficult. We only graduate about 53% of who start. And it's tough for a reason. You see why, right? It's tough for a reason. For every hour in class, we tell our students you need to spend two hours at home. For every hour in class, two hours at home working. Especially second year. Especially second year. But it, good news is if you make it out of the first year with passing grade, chances are you're going to pass. First year's tough and stuff. Now, Mr. Terry came, came to me and said that their biggest challenge was that first year. And we had a candid discussion about what they needed, what they felt students needed coming into their program in order to be successful. Can anybody in this room tell me what they think it is? Yes. Experience. Close. Previous exposure. Very close. Motivation. Close. They need you. Guys like you. They need you. They need Agora. They need students that have been in programs like Agora. Now, when I sat and told them about this program and what we're teaching you, his eyes lit up. So that's why he's here today. I wanted him to see the real deal. And you're the real deal. You've had 64 hours of coding. You've had 64 hours of 3D, pro, 3D modeling. You've had 64 hours of, of, uh, of uh, simulation. Many of you have had more than that if you attended our summer sessions. But more importantly, more important than the technical skills, you have the soft skills that are needed to be successful. So I felt it was only a appropriate to introduce Mr. Terry to Agora and Agora to Mr. Terry. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break, 15 minute break, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna use Unity to visualize this concept. See you in 15.